In this tutorial, you'll learn how to make a nav link active for each page with JavaScript. All right, so I have a simple example project here, and I want to mention that this is the best solution out there. This will work even if you have some kind of query string in the URL or some kind of hash in the URL. I've seen some other solutions out there, and they run into issues once you get into these uh once you get these things into your URL. It also works on the homepage. So if you just have forward slash or no, nothing at all, the path name will still be forward slash. We'll talk about that. But it will also work on the homepage. And it will also work if you have some kind of index.html. So just to walk you through the example here, we have four pages, index, solutions, projects, and contact.html, right? So this is just a simple nav bar. I have a separate video in this playlist, or you could check out one of the links in the description as well if you want to see how to build a responsive nav bar like this. Um, but here we have those four links. Now what we want is, for example, on the homepage that this is there's some kind of visual indicator, right? And when we are on the solutions page that this has the visual indicator. And the way that we're going to do that is with a class. So what we can do is we can just say, for example, active. And we're just going to make this a color of white. So these nav links right now, they have um, a white color, but it's a bit of a lower opacity, 75% here, right? So when they get the active class, they're going to be 100% opacity, right? Just normal white color, right? So now the trick is how to know which nav link should get this active class, right? So now we're going to write some JavaScript. And to make all of this work, um, you're going to run into issues if you're, if you're hrefs, right? So you need to make sure that you're linking properly to these pages right so here in the in the nav here i'm linking to forward slash solutions.html now the problem is if you if you just um load your your html like this in the browser and then click on solutions for example it's gonna it's gonna go to the root of your computer because that's what forward slash means it's the root of something so you're saying we should linking to a solutions.html file at the root right so Right now on my computer, that's going to be the, the C drive. It's going to be the, the root here. But there is, of course, no solutions to the HTML file there. It's in this folder, right? So to make this work, I'm going to use a server. And the server I'm going to use is a live server. It's the most popular one. You probably already have it. But if you don't yet, then you may want to install this extension. Once you've installed this, I can right click here and click on open with live server. And it will open it up on a server. Right? It's all local. But then um, this this will become the root of your project, right? And it has some settings here. I can just remove that. Doesn't we don't need that? But that will be the root now. So now when I click on the solutions here, it's still forward slash solutions, but the root is here, right? So here we actually do have um, a solutions.html file. You may actually get five five zero zero. I don't know why it's giving me five five zero one, but doesn't really matter. Um, but now I can click around here and. It, at least we can go to these different pages now, right? So now let's say on, on the solutions page, we want to add the active class to the uh, solutions nav link, right? So now we're going to have to write some JavaScript. So there are two things that we need, and I'll show you it in the console first. So first of all, we're going to use the URL, and we can get that with JavaScript, actually. So in JavaScript, actually in the browser, we get the window object. This is sort of the global object in the browser. And it has a lot of stuff here. It has all sorts of methods and properties. Now, one thing that's actually very interesting for us is called the location um, property here. Let's take a look if we can find it. Oh, we can also just type it. So we can write window.location. And here it gives us some information about where we are, right? So it, it says something about the URL. So it says something, for example, um, the host name. Okay, it also gives us what we're actually interested in here is the path name. So as you can see the path name here is solutions.html. It's forward slash solutions.html. We can use this and we can, that's the URL, and we can compare this with the href here in the nav links. Right, that's the trick here. So this href also has forward slash dot html so what we can do is when we load the page we're going to go over each nav link we're going to check its href we're going to compare that with the url here right that's the trick so here in our script we're going to need two things we're going to go over each nav link when we load the page so we need to select all those nav link elements so we can say nav link else i like to append l or else to my variable names if we're working with html elements and then we can select all elements so we can say document query selector all in this case because it's multiple and it's dot nav underscore underscore link 
right? I'm using BEM notation here for my class names, right? So it's really important if you work with web development that you have mastered the underlying fundamentals. Those are both CSS as well as JavaScript. I have courses on them both. I highly recommend you check them out if you want to take it to a professional level. So th that's all the nav link elements. And then we also need to know when we load the page, when we go to solutions.html, we load the page, we want to grab the path name that we are currently on, right? So we can say window path name, and that's just window.location.pathName, right? No uppercase here, it's just uh, all lowercase. So those are the two things that we need here. So then what we can do is we can, we can go over each nav link and we can compare its href with what's in the window path name. So we can say nav link elements for each one. So then we're working with the individual nav link L. We can check if this um, nav link L dot href, and we can actually see what dot href gives us. So what you can do is you can select this in your elements tab. And you can see it says something for it says something with dollar sign zero. That means you can you can use it here, right? So I can check what its href is, right? So this is what you get when you take the href of that nav link. You actually get the complete URL. So we can check if this href includes this path name in the window. The path name in the window is just going to be forward slash solutions.html, right? Which is included in this case. So here we would add the active class. So if this href includes this window path name then we want to add the active class. So then we can say for this nav link element, we're going to add a class, class list add. It's going to be the active class that we want to add. Right? We're going to fine tune this in a second, but this is uh, the, the basic stuff. So now if I refresh here, you can see that solutions has the active class, right? Because it's, it's wider, right? So we can also double check this. You can see it has the active class. Right. If I click on projects, it's the project link that has the active class now. Right. So every time you click on a link, you're essentially loading a new HTML file. It's linking those HTML files are linking to this script file. So the script file is being loaded again. Right. So it will run. It will run again. So when I click on contact, we're, we're running this code here. Right. So it's going to take all the nav links. It's going to take the path name in the window, which is forward slash contact.html. So then we're going to go over each nav link. We, we will take each nav link's href. So on contact.html, that's going to be um, this one. We're going to take the href. The href of this one is this, is this string, right? So it's a complete URL. And we're going to check if that includes the window.path name, which is forward slash contact.html in this case. And that's true for, for contact, right? So then this nav link gets the active class, right? So you can pause the video and try to follow the logic one more time. Now you may run into an issue now when you go to the home page. So if we go to the home page, you can see that all of them um, get the active class, right? So if I inspect now, you can see that all of them now get the active class. Why is that? Well, that's because when you go to the home page, we don't have something like home or in, in this case index.html, we don't have that. We, we usually just have forward slash or nothing. So let's see on this page what the path name is. So window.pathname, window, sorry, window location.pathname is just forward slash here at the root of the URL, right? So that's just going to be forward slash. And so then we're going to check, does this, na we're going to go for each nav links href. So that's going to be you know, the, the complete URL, uh, for example, on this, on this solutions here, that would be this, um, your, this, this is the href of the solutions link, right? And we're going to check, does this href include this forward slash? And yes, that's actually the case. It's not an exact match, which is actually what we want. Right? It's just going to check if it includes um, that forward slash. That's how we've set things up now. And so this is not the ideal solution. So we're going to modify this a little bit. So this href, um, a cleaner way would be to take the, the path name of this href as well. So then you have two, two path names to compare, essentially. So how do you take the path name of this, of this string here? Well, you can just turn this into a normal URL object. So that's going to be this href, right? And then you can simply take its path name, right? So you can sort of create an, an URL object with new URL. You can pass a string. It will turn that into a URL object. And then you can take the path name, just like we can take the path name of the location. 
So if you do that, you just get the forward slash solutions.html. Right, so then we, we can just we can just strictly compare whether the path name of the window location is the same as the path name of this uh, href. And that's a cleaner way of doing it. It's going to allow for that exact match. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over each nav link. We're going to take its path name as well. So we're going to say nav link path name. And then we're going to use that new URL constructor. So we're going to say nav link l.href and then we're going to take its path name. So now we have two path names and we can just compare them, you know, with equally, right? So with equal signs. So you can just say if the window path name is the exact same as the nav link path name, then there is a match, a proper match, right? So let's uh, try this. So now when you go to solutions, it still works for projects, contact, solutions, it all works. And now if you go to home, it also works because the, the path name of the home link here is a forward slash, right? Of the intro, it's just, that's just going to be forward slash. And the path name of the, of the window location here is also going to be forward slash. Even though we don't see forward slash here, it's still going to be, uh, that's sim simply how, how browsers have done it. The path name is still forward slash here as well. So you have an exact match, right? So this is a cleaner way of doing it. This will allow for the for the home route to work properly as well. Now maybe um, you have something like initially when you, for example, first load or start the the web server. Maybe um, it's gonna load index.html like this, and now it's not gonna work because the path name of the look of the window here is in the forward slash index.html, and the path name of the home link is simply forward slash, right? But in this case, the home link should still get the active link as well. So what you can do here is you can modify this a little bit. Most of you maybe don't you don't really need this in production, but you know when you first load this web server here, this live server, it's gonna pick the index.html file and it's gonna load it at this route. Right, so then the home is not going to be active, so that looks a bit strange. So I'm going to add these parentheses here because now we're going to have um, another um, condition here, or we're going to add another way of adding this active class. Because if the win if this is an exact match, the nav link path name and the window path name, we want to add the active class. But also, if it's not an exact match, right? So add the active class when this is true, or when this is true. So or the window path name is that index.html file. Right, so then we can say that's the index forward slash index.html and the nav link path name is for simply forward slash. In that case, we also want to add the active class to that nav link. Right, so if you want to make sure that if you go to index.html, it also adds the active class for the home route. This already, this already is getting a bit complicated now, but this is how you would do it. So if we save now, now you can see when I go to index.html, it also has the active class and everything else also still works, right? So don't worry if this is a bit complicated, but it's really important that you have mastered JavaScript if you want to work as a web developer, maybe you're already working as a web developer. It's a really good idea to really hone in those fundamentals. I have a JavaScript course. A lot of people have you know, sent me a lot of emails thanking me for how much uh, the course helped them. And same goes for the CSS, right? You need to be able to do Flexbox, CSS Grid, these are crucial concepts for any web developer, so definitely check out my courses. The links are in the description if you want to take it to a professional or advanced level. By the way, if this was helpful, I'd really appreciate it if you could like and subscribe. Also, check out my courses on CSS and JavaScript if you want to take those skills to an advanced level. Because in there, we will build some beautiful real-world projects from scratch so you can see how everything fits together and really master CSS or JavaScript. And I will also release other courses soon like React and Node.js. So if you want to be notified, then make sure you are subscribed to the email newsletter. You can find the link in the description. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you soon.